Hey guys, so today we're answering the question, how do we respond when people offend us? Man, it can be a really hard thing to deal with. Okay guys, it's supposed to be a quiet set. All right, trying to do a video here. Hey guys, so today we're answering the question, how do we respond when people offend us? Okay, seriously guys, we're trying to do a video here. Can we cut the Tiger King talk? Can we do that? Can we get it together? Self-control is a fruit of the spirit. What'd you say about my mom? All right, so seriously, how do we deal with offense? When people have wronged us, violated something that we feel like we, you know, they gave us something we didn't deserve, those kind of things, you know, we know that people are, are imperfect, right? And we constantly have opportunities where we can take offense. In fact, really our culture basically trains us to look for ways in which people are trying to wrong us or take advantage of us. It trains us to almost be offended. And our natural tendency in those situations is to seek retribution, to try to pay people back. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I'm driving and someone's tailgating me, like just trying to just be ridiculous, right? I don't know about you, but I don't feel feelings of love. I want to slow down and just kind of rub it in a little bit. And it can fill your heart with joy a little bit. Right, let's be honest. But, you know, that's, that's our flesh. The reality is, as, as Christians, uh, if you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, the love of God, Romans chapter 5, verse 5 says, the love of God has been poured out, shed abroad inside of your heart by the Holy Spirit. That love that 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says is not easily provoked. It's not easily angered, not easily offended. It's not overly sensitive, but actually it doesn't even keep a record of wrong. That's the love that's inside of your heart, even if you don't feel like that's true about you right now. So how do we lean into that heart of love that is ours in Christ? Two things I wanna tell you. Number one, remember what you have been forgiven of. Remember what you've been forgiven of. You know, Jesus tells a parable in Matthew chapter 18, goes 21, uh, verse, uh, verse 21 through 35. And he tells about how there's a master who's settling his debts, settling accounts, people that owe him money, right? And so the master goes to one servant who owes him $20 million. And he says, it's payday. Well, the servant begs for mercy, begs for forgiveness from his master. And the master grants him forgiveness of that $20 million debt. Well, that forgiven servant then goes to a fellow servant who owes him $2,000. And that fellow servant begs the forgiven servant, oh, please forgive me, have mercy on me. But he doesn't show that servant, that fellow servant forgiveness. Instead, he actually puts him off into prison until that $2,000 debt can be paid in full. Well, the master finds out about what this forgiven servant had done, he calls him in and says, you should have shown the same mercy that I showed you to your fellow servant and actually imprisons him until his, his debt can be fully repaid. Wow, and it's a huge picture to us that we have been forgiven so much more than what God has ever asked us to forgive. No matter how egregious it may be, as legitimate as it might be, it's still nothing in comparison to what God through Christ has forgiven us of. And I love this quote here from John Bevere. It says this, a person who cannot forgive is a person who has forgotten what they have been forgiven of. I encourage you, put yourself in remembrance because you have not been forgiven just a $2,000 debt or a $20 million debt. You and I have been forgiven an eternal debt. Remember what you have been forgiven of. The second thing I would tell you is this, forgive and bless those that have offended you. It's such, it'll be the hardest thing you'll ever do. But look at this in Luke chapter 6, verses 27 and 28. It says, Jesus speaking, I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. Wow, this is a huge challenge directly from Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, saying this is how I want you to act. It's amazing. And he tells us to forgive and to bless and so forgiveness, it's not saying that what they did is acceptable. It's not saying, you know, that it was okay. We are not minimizing anything. But it is saying that you and I refuse to sit in God's seat. He's the avenger. He's the judge, not us. If something needs to happen toward that person, he'll, he'll see ultimately justice served. But listen, your part and my part is to forgive. And when we forgive, someone else isn't getting off the hook. They're not the one that's going free. It's actually us, you and I, go free when we choose to forgive. 
The other part is this, because forgiveness can get you a place of being neutral in your heart to someone, but to bless and believe good and speak good over someone, man, that's really exercising the love of God that's in your heart. So I encourage you as, you, as you pray, and again, it'll be the hardest thing you'll ever do. You won't feel like doing it. It's completely an act of humility to what Jesus told us to do and an act of faith in spite of feelings that are pulling the opposite direction. And simply to pray over people what you would want to be prayed over you and your loved ones. Father, I just pray over them right now. I speak good over them. I pray that you bless everything that they do, every place that they go, and every arena of their life, that they have peace and joy. Speak those things over those people that have wronged you and offended you in your heart. And again, you won't feel like doing it, but as you're doing it, again, you are exercising the love of God that's shed abroad inside of your heart. Forgive and bless those that have offended you. And I'll leave you with this last verse. Romans chapter 12, verse 18 says this, If it is possible, as far as it depends upon you, live at peace with everyone. You can't control other people's response to your forgiving them and blessing them. But you know, that's not your part. Your part is to live at peace within your own heart toward everyone. Do your part with that. Leave the rest up to that person. And I encourage you to take that approach in everyday life. And I'll, again, summarize our takeaways here today. Number one, remember what you've been forgiven of. Number two, forgive and bless those that have offended you. And lastly, choose to have a heart posture where you live at peace with everyone as much as it depends upon you. I hope this was really helpful to you. Again, we have new questions, new content coming out every Tuesday and Friday right here on this channel. If this, if this particular video helped you, like this video, share it with people. And I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Hit subscribe, hit the little bell, give you notification when new videos are posted so you don't miss a thing. We hope to see you again real soon.